All right, so in order to uh, really help us get refocused and back on track, when we left on break, we were focusing on inequalities, and we were focusing on linear inequalities. Prior to linear inequalities, we had focused on graphing absolute values, which are V-shaped uh, piecewise functions that meet at the vertex. So what we're going to do today in order to really um, review and get ready for the last part of 2-8, we are going to do a graphing absolute value review. So what we have is the parent function and the transformations of it. So for any function, there are four basic ways to transform its graph. The original function is always known as the parent function. So I can always give it the example that, um, you know, we have our parents and we look like our parents. And basically in math, the parent function is the function that all of its families of functions come from. So that's why they look alike. So a vertical translation so if you think about the word vertical, vertical means up and down. A vertical translation is a graph that is moved up or down. A horizontal translation is a shift or a movement left or right. A reflection is when a graph is flipped over the x-axis. And a reflection is when it is flipped over the x-axis. If a graph is stretched, then it's going to become more narrow vertically. And if a graph is compressed, it becomes wider. So in terms of absolute value functions, a vertical translation or a movement up or down was a plus or a minus k value. A movement left or right was a plus or a minus h value. A reflection created a negative a. If it was stretched, then a was greater than 1. And if it was widened, then my A value was between 0 and 1. So we have the parent function. The parent absolute value function is absolute value of x. Its transformation function is y equals a absolute value of x minus h plus k. The most important point is h comma k. This point is known as our vertex. The generic shape of an absolute value function is a v. The domain of an absolute value function is always all reals. And the range in the parent function is y greater than or equal to 0. But in terms of its transformation function, it will be y greater than or equal to or less than or equal to the k value. It will be a greater than or equal to if the a value is positive. It will be a less than or equal to if the A value is negative.
graphing the parent function, we have five key points. The vertex is always in the middle of my table. You can find your key points by plugging the x value in to the equation. So this is kind of like saying f of 0. Well, f of 0 is the absolute value of 0, which is 0. f of negative 2 is the absolute value of negative 2, which is 2. And again, you could repeat that pattern for all key points. So there's my five key points. Remember that the vertex is in the middle. It's h comma k. In this case, since there isn't an h or a k, my vertex is 0, 0. When graphing an absolute value, it's always helpful to have those five key points. So you have 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2. The a value is 1, which means that graph has a slope of 1 in opposite directions. So there's my parent absolute value function. Remember, an absolute value function has a line of symmetry. So it is going to be symmetric about the line that goes through the vertex. So it will always have an AOS of x equals h. In this case, my h value is 0. Therefore, I have a line of symmetry through x equals 0, which means that I could take my graph and fold it in half across that line, and all of my points will match up. So what you're going to do for the remainder of class time today and submit it on Fusion for tomorrow is complete sections 1, 2, and 3. So you're going to complete sections 1, 2, and 3.